Yo, it's DZ and today I will show you how to install a custom IPL at your PSP which has an installed firmware 6.20 or 6.35 Pro. The custom IPLs are usually just for the 6.39 and 6.60 Pro custom firmware or for the ME revisions. Well, or older custom farmers like 5.00M33. Here we have two PSP. PSP 1000 with the farmer 6.20 and the PSP 2000 with the farmer 6.20. Next, I'm gonna install the Pro custom farmer. You guys know this, the Pro Custom Firmware Installer, the Pro Fast Recovery, the Launcher and the Permanent Patch, which is 6.20 exclusive. And here we have a CIP of Flasher, which is usually just for the 6.39 and 6.60 if you're using the Pro Custom Firmware. But some guy from the Vololo forum did with a bit help of Neuron and CIPL flasher for the 6.20 and 6.35 Pro. I guess his name was Rahim US. So if you want to thank someone, thank him. Let's go install the Pro Custom Farmer. Okay, it was previously installed, so just launch it. Okay, it seems that the PSP 2000 is nearly running out of energy. I need to recharge it, but we'll do it later. 6.20 Pro C model. O2G by PSP 2000 and non 88 version 3 2000 and the 6.20 for C at the PSP 1000. Next, I'm gonna show you how long it takes to boot the original fiber. So, shutting down. PSPs and okay let's count one two three four four seconds for booting the original firmware next I'm gonna install the permanent patch on both PSPs At the moment there are no plugins configured, so I should be able to install this at first launching the Pro Custom Farmer. I should be able to install this without any bugs. There we go. Installing the permanent patch on both PSPs. The permanent patch can be installed on every PSP which supports the 6.20 custom firmware. You need to launch it, press X, then it's recommended to press X again. If the PSP boots, you can install it like I do it now. I know my PSP does support the permanent patch, so I will press O at the second question, which installs a permanent patch. Other stuff like pressing two times the X button is for testing if the permanent patch 
will support your PSP for preventing breaks. Next we will shut the PSP down. Same with the 2000. And shutting down. Now we'll count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, around 6 to 7 seconds for booting the launching the 2000 for booting the pro custom firmware via the permanent patch I'm gonna uninstall this now because it's really not necessary to use permanent patches on PSP 1000 or 2000 except it's an 88 version 3 it's just wasting of time and not as good as a CIPL uninstall the permanent patch, yes Same at the 2000. Next, I'm gonna reset the VSH so it will load a fresh VSH and isn't anymore in the like permit patched loading VSH or such stuff. Some people guess the rarest things, so just doing additional reboots for peeping not claiming this is a fake or such stuff. Um, now we're using CIPL Flash for Pro C. One bad thing is it doesn't say 6.20 CIPL Flasher, it just says CIPL Flasher, which kind of sucks, but it's a very easy fix just changing some stuff in the param.sfo next we will install the CIPLs on both PSPs remember you can't install CIPLs on the PSP 1000 uh, my fault PSP 2088 version 3 every 3000 go or E1000. You will break your PSP if you try to install a CIPL on these new PSPs. Well, next, pressing X for installing the CIPL. It will launch the VSH again, not cold booting like it should, but that's not important. Um, shutting down and shutting down. Okay, now we will count again. And go. One, two, three, four. So the CIPL boots at the same speed like the original firmware. Three to five, uh, three to four seconds. But for a nice comparison, I will install. At first I will uninstall the CIPL from the 1000 and I will install the permanent patch on the 1000 for comparing the CIPL to the permanent patch. I will shut the PSP 2000 down, will uninstall the CIPL from the 1000 via pressing O, it should install the 6.20 original firewares IPL ok, Pro Custom Firmware is still available next installing the permanent patch yes If you're asking, I'm recording this video with my iPhone, iPhone 4S, so I guess it will be a pain in the heck to upload this video. It will be around 2 or 3 gigabytes, but never mind. Um, shutting down. I'm trying to boot them nearly at the same time because I'm holding the iPhone with my one hand and have to boot the PSPs with the other hand so I guess I will boot the permanent patch PSP 
half a second earlier I'm trying my fastest okay CIPL permanent patch um, yeah the CIPL is faster around two or three seconds faster but you could guess hmm two or three seconds it's a waste of time I have the three seconds no need for the CIPL um, you can install you actually can install flash zero themes like new waves moddings of the XMB icons you can install a complete CTF theme into the flash zero if you have a CIPL custom firmware previously this was just possible at the me custom firmwares, M33 custom firmwares, or older custom firmwares. Well, and 6.39 and 6.60 Pro because they have an official CIPL installer. That's another stuff. Um, with the permanent patch, you are not able to install any of the Flash Zero themes because you need to fake sign these. PRX files of the themes like receive VSH main for launching the Pro Custom firmware. So pretty much the permanent patch. And with CIPL you don't need to sign these PRX files because the CIPL just loads the stuff and it doesn't care if it's encrypted, decrypted, compressed, decompressed or such stuff. The permanent patch you have the same restrictions like at the original firmware so it's not possible to install any themes into the flash of a permanent patched firmware except for some little changes like fitting waves or change XMB icons this little possibilities I'm using for myself for the light or pro speed XMB mod. So yeah these tiny changes are possible about, but not changes like I don't know uh, flashing the Xbox 360 dashboard theme or such stuff. Um, yeah um, last thing I will show is Launching the recovery menu via CIPL should be faster than usual. And loaded. It's pretty much loaded in one, two seconds. So, pretty awesome. If you break your PSP, like, yeah, flashing faulty themes, it's maybe possible to revert this semi brick with the permanent patch with the CIPL patch you're nearly 100% safe except you delete some important stuff like the like the recovery.prx or like um, stuff in the KD folder which is mostly important for booting the PSPs loading drivers and such stuff well um, that was my little explanation video about the new CP CIPLs for the 6.20 Pro C1 I guess it's even working with the newest fixes so if you have in PSP 1000 or 2000 and you're using the 6.20 or 6.35 of Pro custom firmware get the CIPL it's way better than the permanent patch otherwise use the 6.60 Pro or Me custom firmware or LME, which is mostly recommended by everyone. Permanent patches, in my opinion, just for some lazy fucks who who are too lazy to use the launchers of the firmwares. So have fun with your PCs. Have fun with your nice custom firmwares. Well, that's pr pretty much everything. Have a nice day. That was me, the that.